Hi guys, uh, welcome back. Uh, Doug from uh, BudgetAstro.net, which is now my website. It is live. Uh, it's a blog actually, it's not a website, but uh, it's a start. Um, it's something behind the link, uh, and it will uh, hopefully evolve eventually into a full blown website, but it all takes time. Uh, at least it's there. Um, okay, I digress. Now, this. Uh, tutorial is a bit of a diversion from uh, what I normally do. It addresses um, an issue with uh, Deep Sky Stack. I don't know if it's a bug or whether it's just not very well explained in the uh, help files, uh, but it um, addresses an issue with um, stacking uh, multiple sessions with uh, DSS. Uh, it certainly applies to version 3.3.2, which is the version that I use. There is a beta uh, that's been around for a while, 3.3.3. Um, I did try that once and I couldn't get on with it for some reason, I can't remember why. Uh, so I reverted back to 3.3.2. Uh, and it certainly applies to that. As I say, I don't know if it's a bug or whether it's just not very well explained in the uh, in the help file. Um, I hope I'm not doing the guys at uh, DSS a, a disservice because uh, obviously I think this is a fantastic program uh, and the price is certainly right. Uh, I'm sure if uh, if what I'm putting on this uh, video is wrong, they'll, uh, they'll uh, soon let me know. Okay. Now it actually involves uh, the use of file groups, what are called file groups in uh, Deep Sky Stacker. Um, and you would use file groups if you're combining um, images from multiple sessions. In other words, if you've taken um, a set of subs on one night and then the following night you take another set of subs, uh, you may want to combine those those subs to, uh, to form one image. And to do that, you use what are called file groups in DSS. Okay, now I'll quickly uh, demonstrate what file groups are. Uh, we've got DSS open. I'm going to open a picture file. Any picture file will do. Scroll down, pick that one there, that'll do. Click open. Now, what you may have noticed in the past, uh, which I'm about to show you, is as soon as you put a file in uh, the main group, uh, a second tab opens. Can you see that group 1 down the bottom there? Click on that. It's empty at the moment. Um, so that open automatically, as soon as you open, uh, put a file in the main group, another tab will open in group 1. As soon as you put anything in that, another tab will appear, which will be group 2. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and they're file groups, and that's what you use for um, stacking uh, multiple sessions in uh, DSS. Now this is the um, DSS help file. There's a link to this from um, the DSS website, and the important bit is file groups. That's shown in the middle of the screen there. Um, specifically this bit here that I'm about to highlight. Um, now what I'll do, you probably can't read that, so I'm going to zoom into that and uh, read you what it says. Okay, um, it says there are two kinds of file groups, the main group, which is your first group, and then all the other groups. So you've got the main group, and then group 1, group 2, group 3, and so on and so forth. Um, it says light frames from the main group may only be associated with calibration frames from the main group. It says dark flat, and I said bias, but I'll call them calibration frames. Now basically what they're saying is that any subs, light frames that you put in the main group, only the calibration frames from the main main group can be associated with them. You can't have calibration frames in group 1 or 2 associated with the light frames in the, group, in the main group. Uh, the second point is dark flat and well calibration frames from the main group may be associated to light frames of any other group. So the darks, flats and bias that you put in the main group tab can be associated with lights from group 1, group 2, group 3 and so on. And the last point is that uh, calibration frames from other groups may be associated only with light frames of the same group. So calibration frames that you put in group 1 can only be associated with subs in group 1. Uh, and that's what it says on the uh, on the help file. Okay. Okay, here we are DSS. Um, now I've got two sessions from uh, M51 uh, that I want to process. One from this year, 2012, and uh, one from last year, 2011. Uh, and I want to uh, combine those two uh, sets of subs into uh, one image. And I've got all the uh, all the files loaded in the um, in the window down here. I've got the main group, which is one session, and I've got group one, which is a second session. I'm actually going to zoom into this so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, now because these um, sessions were so far apart, there was a year between them. Um, the calibration frames, I've got a full set of calibration frames for each session. Um, you should always take darks for each session because the temperature is going to vary and things like that so you, every, every session that you do you should take a new set of darks um, flats and uh, bias providing everything else is equal uh, same focal length for you know if you're using the same uh, same cam on the same scope etc etc um, you can use your flats uh, and your bias 
for probably several months before you need to take new ones. Um, but in this particular instance, I've taken a full set of calibration frames for both sessions. Now, if you look at these uh, files, so this is the main group. Uh, this is the second session, actually. Uh, and I'll scroll down. I've got my uh, bias, uh, then I've got my darks, then I've got my flats, then I've got my lights. And they're all from the same session. So that's the main group. Uh, group 1, which is this one here, click on that tab. Um, this is the second session. Uh, and again, I've got uh, the bias, and then the darks, and then the flats, and then the lights. Now that should work. Um, this is group 1. Uh, and it says in the tutorial, in the sorry, in the um, help file, in the technical information, um, that uh, calibration frames from groups one and two, etc., can only be associated with light frames from the same group. So that does suggest that if you put calibration frames in group one, they will be associated with the light frames in uh, group one. But that's not actually what happens. Okay, we're in uh, Photoshop now, and uh, the image that you can see on the screen is the uh, image I got when I stacked session one on its own last year. Um, so that was just session one on its own, and that's fine. Um, this second image is what I got from DSS when I stacked both sessions together, as I just showed you in DSS. All the calibration frames and the lights in the main group, and then all the calibrations and the uh, lights in the in group one. Um, and you can see something's gone quite badly wrong here, uh, because I've got this horrible noisy bit uh, up in the top left hand corner. That's actually uh, as a result of um, mismatched darks um, because I get terrible um, amp glow on the Nikon D70 and uh, the darks haven't got rid of it. Uh, and that's uh, that's actually what happened. Now the reason for this is that any calibration frames that you put in the main group, be they darks, flats or bias, will be associated with all the other groups, group 1, group 2, group 3. It doesn't matter what you put in group 1, 2 and 3, whether you put calibration frames in them, DSS will automatically um, associate the calibration frames in the main group with groups 1, 2 and 3. So it applied the darks from the main group um, to the light frames from group 1 and there's a mismatch because they were a year apart uh, and that's why we've got this, this sort of dodgy image. Now there is uh, quite an easy way to tell if this has uh, happened. This is the folder structure for group one, the second group. And if we look at the uh, darks, <coughs> open the darks folder. Um, there's all my dark files, uh, which is uh, fine. Now bear in mind this is after the image has been stacked. What there should be uh, in this uh, in this folder is a master dark. Uh, there should be two files: a master dark description and a master dark uh, TIFF file. Uh, and there isn't one. Now what that tells us is that DSS has ignored these files, they haven't been processed, otherwise there'd be a master dark in there. Now if we look at um, the other group, now this is the uh, this is the main group, uh, and we look at the darks in there, there we go, there's all the darks, and uh, at the top there we've got a master dark description text file, uh, and a master dark tiff. Uh, and what DSS has done is taken the master dark from the uh, main group and applied it uh, to the lights from group 1. And uh, as I said, if we look at the uh, dark files for group 1, there's no master. Uh, and that would apply, uh, in this instance, that would apply to all the calibration frames, the darks, the flats and the bias. Uh, none of them will have um, will have a master in. Uh, and that tells you that DSS hasn't processed those files. Okay. Now here we are back to DSS. Uh, and there is a way around this. Um, the way to force DSS to apply the calibration frames from group 1 to the lights from group 1 and the calibration frames from group 2 to the lights from group 2 etc uh, is not to put any calibration frames in the main group. If you put calibration frames in the main group it will apply them to the main group and groups 1, group 2 and so on and so forth. Um, the way to do, to do that is to load a light frame uh, into the main group, just one, any other light frame not from the groups that you process and I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so just put any light frame in there and make sure it's not ticked. So you can see that down here. Uh, group 1 I've got session 2 and in group 2 I've got session 1. Or the other way around, that doesn't matter what way around you put them. Uh, and they're the same as they were before, except for it's, it's now group 1 and group 2. I've got all of the frames, lights, subs, darks and bias in, in group 1 from that session and in lights, uh, darks, flats and bias from group 2 for that session. The only difference is the main group has now only got one light frame in it 
and it's not ticked. Now the reason it's not ticked um, is if it's ticked it will try and apply that, uh, you know, try and use that particular light frame with all the other light frames and uh, you've picked a light frame from any any session, uh, could be any image. Uh, the reason you do that, you don't pick one of the light frames from the sessions that you're processing, uh, is because DSS will only uh, put a light frame in one group. So if you pick one of the light frames you want to use in the main group, it won't let you put that in group one or group two. Um, so pick a light frame from any, any light frame, as long as it isn't from the image you're trying to process, and that'll be fine. And when you click check all up here, once you've loaded all your files, just go back to the main group and untick that, and then it won't use it. Uh, but group one and group two have got all the, uh, the files that we want, uh, and it will process them in a the normal way. Now, here we are back in uh, Photoshop. Very complicated, this tutorial, flitting from uh, program to program. Um, anyway, um, this is the uh, image that I showed you previously. This is um, session one on its own um, that I processed last year, and that's fine. Uh, the second one is, uh, again, the one I showed you previously, the dodgy one uh, from uh, combining sessions one and two the wrong way. Uh, and the third one is uh, combining sessions, uh, you know, both sessions the correct way. Uh, with uh, the single light in uh, in the main group, uh, and if I compare that with uh, the first one, uh, you can see they look much the same, um, which which means that the correct calibration frames have been applied to uh, both uh, both sessions. Uh, there's actually more information in uh, in this image uh, you, because there's more lights, but uh, you can't see it because it hasn't been processed. Okay, so that seems to have um, worked. Now, um, whether it's a bug in uh, 332 DSS or, or whether it's just not been very well described in the help file I don't know um, but uh, as I say if, I, if I'm wrong uh, and I've got it's just me uh, then I'm sure uh, somebody from uh, DSS will uh, let me know if they get to hear about this and uh, I shall remove this video immediately okay um, well I hope that's been of use uh, I should just mention that um, if we look at groups 1 and 2 here that I've got a full set of uh, lights and then calibration frames for group 1 and for group 2. The reason I did that is because they were a year apart. Um, now, if your images were on, say, consecutive days or within a week or a couple of weeks of each other or whatever, you may want to apply the bias and one set of bias and flats to uh, all your sessions, which is perfectly acceptable. You can do that. Um, if that's what you want to do, um, then bear in mind that any calibration frames that are put in the main group will be applied to all the other groups. So you can quite happily um, put your bias and your flats in the main group uh, and they'll be applied to all the groups. So all you need to put in group one, group two, group three, etc., uh, is your lights and your darks. Uh, the bias and the flats will be applied from the main group to all the other groups. Uh, the reason I didn't do that in this case is because the two sessions were too far apart, so I had new, new uh, bias and new flats. Okay, good. All right, guys. Um, you may find that uh, you've had this problem in the past and not even been aware of it, that there's been a mismatch with your calibration frame. So if that is the case, uh, you haven't been aware of this problem, uh, then it might be worth uh, restacking them because you may get a better result. Um, good. All right, guys. I, should, I hope that's been of use, as I say, and I'll, uh, I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers. Bye.